when you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality. Who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Hi, I'm John Mallison. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this, uh, what is it, Tuesday morning already? Hey, the week is going by fast and we're live on Comcast Channel 187, 43.6. Today we're going to be talking about the Valley Animal Cell, uh, Center. The Valley Animal C uh, Center. Let's see, I, I said that twice and didn't get it right. Anyway, 436 Me TV Option 11. Do not wade through the message, my friends. Just hit Option 11 as soon as you can. Very interesting and a very timely topic, I think, on this uh, Tuesday morning. Back in just a moment. Glad to have you along, and I mentioned this is a timely issue. I think it really is because we're talking about animal control, and there are so many, you know, agencies trying to take care of animal control these days. And in the Central Valley, you have, well, just the whole Central Valley. If you go up and down the valley, you've got more than a couple of million people just living in this whole valley, this whole area. Uh, and so think of the animals that are running loose. Think of the animals that uh, have to be cared for. And so our topic today is on the nonprofit uh, group. They're called the Valley Animal Center. It's a nonprofit for dogs and cats. And by the way, a big fundraiser for the nonprofit coming uh, this coming weekend at Fresno State. It's called the Wiggle Waggle Walk. It's actually a run and a walk, but they call it a Wiggle Waggle Walk. So anyway, a little play on words there. We're going to go to the videotape right now and show you where this center is located. It's off of Dakota between Maple and uh, uh, Cedar. Originally, the space for these animals was about well, about 18,000 square feet, but with the new expansion that took place, now you're looking at about uh, roughly 24,000 square feet plus. Also, there is a dog park, my friends, and there it is. It's about one and a half acres for those pooches to run around and have a good time and play and just have fun in the sun. Now, at one time, this place was called the California Sea Lion Foundation, but they changed their name in 2007. Currently, they carry a lot more cats, though, than dogs. 350 cats to 70 dogs. So if you're a cat lover and you want to adopt one, apparently there is plenty at this point to choose from. About 5 to 10 animals, maybe up to 15, come into this place per day. That's the space inside uh, the center now, and you're looking at one of the dogs right there. Officials say that most people prefer to adopt a dog over a cat at this point. Not sure why, but it costs roughly $1.5 million a year to operate the no-kill center. That's uh, their policy, no-kill, because it is a nonprofit, and they fall under very different guidelines than if you had a shelter that was run by the government, either the city or the county. Some kids there playing with the pooch. Oh, that is a cute shot. Live in our studio right now is Rosie Davenpoint. Uh, Port, the spokesperson for the Valley Animal Center, and she is here to take your calls and answer all kinds of questions. 436 Me TV Option 11 on this Tuesday morning. If you have a question, if you want to adopt a pet, she didn't bring one in the studio today, but you know what dogs and cats look like if you want to adopt or if you're having a problem. Let's say you adopted a dog and suddenly you cannot take care of it any longer. Maybe it's the cost, maybe it's the burden, maybe you don't have time for the dog or the cat as you thought maybe at one time you did, you can call in and ask a question to Rosie about that very same question. 436 Me TV Option 11. We're back with our program here on Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV in just a moment. Remember me? After practicing law, Raymond Berg fought crime. You have the right to an attorney. 
as a hard-boiled detective on wheels. Ain't it the truth? His name is Ironside. Perhaps you wouldn't mind saying it again. His name is Ironside. All right, now you've said it. Nothing slows him down. I want to see this one firsthand. Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Now what are we waiting for? Back here on the showroom floor of Ventura TV on this Tuesday morning talking about the Valley uh, Animal Center. And it's a great place if you want to go and adopt a dog, adopt a cat. I guess dogs at this point are more popular. I don't know why. Maybe it's the kids. You know, a cat, you can get a cat and you can kind of ignore it. It does its own thing. You know, they walk around. They don't, they don't want you to bother them. Dogs want you to bother them. That's the difference. Rosie Davenport is our guest. Hi, Rosie. Good morning. Nice to see you. How Thank are you? you? I'm doing really Good. well, thanks. Am I right? Cats are kind of aloof. They want to kind of stay in their own corner, leave me alone. A dog is like up in your face, you know. It's, yeah, they, you know, they need the attention, the I dogs. Think, I think it's definitely a personal thing. I I actually have a kitten right now who's very mm -hmm. in your face and wants my attention all of the time. How, how young a cat, um, though? He's a teenager now, so he's about six months old. Wait till he gets older. He won't want anything he, to do with you. He will. <laughs> they, do, they do tend to be a bit more aloof than dogs, and, you know, I always think of it as the different ways they love. You know, dogs are just unconditionally loving and you have to earn a cat's love, I always think. I think so. And I, I think dogs are more, a little more trusting just right off the bat by yeah. nature. By yeah. nature. I, I would agree with you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so big problem here in the Valley. You have a lot of stray animals. Yeah, we, and... have, uh, we have not only stray animals, but, um, you know, unwanted animals. Let's put it that way. Homeless animals is what we call them. Um, we actually one of the, have one of the highest epidemics of homeless animals in the entire country here in the valley. Yeah. So the, the question begs, what do you do about it? I mean, you know, you have, you have, uh, there, there's a, there's kind of a, um, you know, a tit for tat here between government officials. Now you're a nonprofit, so it doesn't really apply to you, but for the longest time, you know, the, the, the animal shelters that are owned and operated by, not owned, but operated by government officials, uh, similar to Liberty, um, you know, it, it, they go back and forth. There's always a riff. Do you, do you keep the animal? Do you kill it? How many do you, do you take in a day? Why is there why is there that debate and that that ongoing struggle? So how it works, and a lot of people don't realize that um, a city and a county have a mandate by the state of California to provide certain animal control services. So those services are they have to provide an area that the public can take stray, unwanted, and aggressive animals. Right. So basically, because we have that mandate, uh, animal control has no choice. Those who are contracted to do animal control here in our area have no choice but to take in those stray unwanted abandoned or surrendered surrendered animals yeah okay another uh, call here good morning you're on connect with me with rosie davenport your question please hey well my question is for one oh, gee. do you guys stay in neuter Yes, at our, um, if you're asking at the, our facility, the Valley Animal Center, we actually have a low-cost spay, neuter, and vaccination clinic on site that's open to all Valley residents. We provide the services okay. at one low cost to everybody who walks through our doors. Okay, great. And then the other thing is, if, you know, do you get to play with the dogs ahead of time to see if they're hyper or um, maybe their personality? Yeah, so what um, we always provide, what services we provide to the community who want to adopt to us from us, um, if you come into our shelter, you're guaranteed to get an animal that's spayed or neutered, fully vaccinated, check for all diseases, they'll come microchipped, and we also temperament test them. So we will test them to see if they're good with cats, if they like kids, if they're food aggressive, and then we'll actually let you spend some time with the animal in, in a private room or take it out to the dog park um, and let you meet it so that you know what you're bringing into your home. Um, we also let you, if you have a dog at home and you want to uh, let your dog come in and meet, meet your potential adopted dog as well, that's totally fine. We want you to make the most informed decision possible when you decide to take an animal into your home. Okay, and the other thing that I've heard different uh, things about is having the bark removed. How do you feel about that? I take care of my sister who has Down syndrome and she can't handle a dog that barks. You know, so, have you heard of that procedure? Yeah, I don't know the science, the medical science behind it and what it would encompass. Um, I've talked to a few vets about it, and I've heard it's, um, you're not removing their desire to bark. You're just 
uh, basically damaging the vocal cords is what I've understood enough that uh, it, it, they're, they're still trying to bark. You're just kind of damaging uh, their basic structure. So my mm. recommendation on that is <laughs> there are definitely breeds um, out there that don't bark. I, I for myself, have a husky. Um, they're known to, they don't bark. She, my dog talks. She talks in a really funny voice. You can, you know, I'm sure you can look up videos of dogs that talk. But um, she doesn't actually bark. So you definitely want to do some breed research and figure out what breed, first of all, you know, is not inclined to do a lot of barking. Okay. Okay. And what is the price to actually adopt with you guys? So our dogs cost $175 to adopt and our cats are $85. Um, that is basically to cover, you know. So the, it doesn't matter what size dog. It it's doesn't. It's 175 Yes, it is the across the board, except we do a lot of promotions um, when we have animals in our shelter for quite some time. So for our animals who have been with us, you know, for too long of a period of time and we want to see them go into a home, we will reduce their adoption rates from time to time. All right. Thank Aww. you for the call. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Let's roll the videotape now. We've got uh, some video of some dogs at the Valley Animal Center, and there it is right now. So as we're looking at this video right now, um, what do you do about the homeless animals, whether they're dogs or cats? You can't keep them all. Would you agree with that? So as a no-kill shelter um, in a private organization, we legally can't even take in stray animals to our organization. Legally, they have to go through animal control to give their owner a chance to claim animal them. Animal control meaning? Animal control. So in Fresno, that would be the Fresno SPCA. Fresno right. County is Liberty Animal Control, and Clovis has Correct. Clovis Animal Services. Correct. And then how do you get them? So how we operate is we try and take in our, the majority of our animals from animal control. So say they haven't been claimed by their owner, uh, they might be running out of time at animal control, it's getting pretty full, then we go in and say we've had, we have 10 spaces for so dogs. So if I found a stray dog, I couldn't bring it straight to you your place. You could not bring it to us, I'd no. have to take it to SBCA. Yes. Boom, they'd check it out. They'd, they'd call you guys and say, hey, we got a dog here that was a stray. Do you want it? Yeah, and you know, it would just depend on the space that we have. If we have a great day and we have 20 right. adoptions in a day, then yeah, we can go down to animal control right. and pick out 20 animals that um, we can take into our shelter. And then they stay with us until they do find a home. Right. Where do you get most of your money from? It's a, it's, I said in the monologue that it's about a $1.5 million budget, give or take. Yes. For the sake of argument. Yes. Where do you get most of your money? Um, we're, they're all private donations. Um, okay. We do receive some grants from private granting organizations. We don't receive... Federal grants or state um, grants or private grants? Private granting organizations. Okay. Okay. Uh, we don't receive any municipal funding. Okay. So it's all private donations. Okay. What do you think about the rift that's going on right now with uh, Liberty? Of course, there are a lot of animal lovers outraged that they're even killing animals. It's a difficult situation that they're in. It because is, there are a lot of animals. It I is mean, very difficult, and it's a sad situation, to be honest. You know, as I said, we have one of the highest epidemics of um, overpopulations with pets here in our area. And unfortunately, there's no real cut and dry answer as to how we can end this. I know you're a no-kill facility, and you're not in favor of killing. So what would be your solution? It wouldn't be an overnight solution. Um, our solution what would it be, would be uh, first of all, we would have to introduce free or extremely low cost spaying and neutering on a very wide basis across the entire valley. So make that available to people who cannot afford to get their pets spayed and neutered. That would be the first answer. That, that would that would be a, a, a topic that you'd have to investigate because that, that's, I don't even know if that's possible. It is. Uh, many cities in the U.S. have done that and um, they've been able to get funding either from the city raising a tax or from granting organizations that have supplied those funds. Do you funds. think a ta raising a, 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 a tax in this day and age would be a popular thing to do? I don't think it would. I don't think it would be popular. Um, I guess it just depends how important of an issue it is to the community at this point. If they're sick right. of seeing stray animals on the street, if they want to find a solution, that's a possible solution. Right. And so you think spay and neutering is the is the answer? That's the solution? I think it's the major answer. There's definitely some things you can do to support that, that solution. Um, number one would be spay and neutering. We would see such a reduction if if everybody could have could afford to get their pet spayed and neutered, we would see a huge reduction in the amount of animals. What does it animals. cost to spay and neuter a dog or a cat? Well, um, it depends. If you're going coming to us in our facility, um, the cost for cats starts at $40 and 65 for dogs. If you go to a private practice vet, you're probably going to pay 
maybe around 200 um, starting there because their business, you know, they're, they're a for-profit organization and um, they have a lot of bills to pay. So uh, that's your, your basic cost. Now, the actual cost to a clinic or the cost to, you know, the base cost would be not much lower than what we're charging. You know, it's it just depends on how much of that you can get subsidized by, by these organizations. Right. We're talking to Rosie Davenport. She's a spokesperson for the Valley Animal Center here in the city of Fresno. It's not too far away from us. It's off of Dakota there between Maple and Cedar. So go check it out. And she's going to come back. She'll give the phone number too. We're going to be back here at 436-ME-TV, option 11 on Connect With Me in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here on Connect With Me, and the number here is 436-ME-TV, option 11, talking to Rosie Davenport of the Valley Animal Center. If you want to call in and ask a question, you want to adopt an animal, that would be a good thing to do. So you got more cats than dogs, I understand, a lot more, and I guess adopting a cat is not so popular as it is adopting a dog. we got videotape of some cats here, and the felines, I had a cat growing up, but I also had a dog. I had a dog and a cat, so... I had the best of both worlds. But why is it that you have more cats? Why do people like dogs more than cats? I can't answer that question. It's kind of the chicken or the egg. I, I have no idea why people like dogs more than cats. Uh, it just, just by the figures alone, we see, you know, probably 50% more adoptions of dogs and cats. Um, we Our cats probably have an average span. If they come into our shelter as an adult, they'll likely stay there a year or more. A dog will probably, it would be a rare case for a dog to stay in our shelter for under, for over a year. And you have roughly, what, 350 cats right now? Yeah, about that. Uh-huh. And when someone comes in and they ask, uh, they ask for a cat, what are they usually looking for? Kittens. Kittens. They want the yes. kitten from day one. Everybody wants a kitten, and everybody who comes in wants a kitten to adopt. And we have a lot of those, but we also have a lot of adult cats. And so the kittens, if we get a kitten in, they are guaranteed to go to a home Um that's why we don't. Nobody wants an older cat. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't, and it's crazy. You know, I love older cats. So yeah, um, yeah, but kittens are cute. They are very They're cute. playful and yep. cute, and have a lot of energy. All right, you're on Connect with me. Your question. My question is, isn't there some funding out there available to make those low cost or no cost spay and neuter, um, uh, um, spay and neuter? Uh, 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 mechanism put that mechanism in place i'm sure other communities have it i know fresno's hit hard with homeless animals is there some grant that could that could be that could be had to yes. offset the cost yes there definitely are it's just the size of the grants that are available so for instance um well, i know a lot of low low cost um spay and neuter clinics receive um, funding to subsidize those costs, but they don't last forever. You know, it's maybe yeah. a $25,000 grant, which is wonderful, but it's not going to do a large, it's not going to have a large scale impact on our community. So, you know, you would really need to invest in, in really, um, you know, probably a few million dollars, uh, annual budget. Right. All right. Another call here. You're on connect with me. What's your question? Well, question is kind of, I heard you saying what between dogs and cats, why dogs are, uh, adopted more. Because to me, I love them both, but I think dogs are more interactive. They really like, they're personal, they're like people. That's why people like dogs to adopt them more often. But hey, I thank you for your show, and it's a great guest today. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, dogs do have a different personality, and they do, you know, they, they, they're a little more charming than cats. Um, they have a completely different demeanor than cats. Uh, aside from the kittens that you mentioned earlier yeah. before, but but I mean, if you get a kitten, it's high energy and it's trusting and it's, it wants the love yes. and attention. And they're so cute. They're very, right. very, very cute. Right. But would you agree with the caller? 
Um, yes. I mean, I think that I know my dog. I have what both a dog, an adult dog that I adopted as an adult, and a kitten, um, a teenager who I'm actually fostering for our organization. And uh, my dog loves me unconditionally, and my kitten loves me, but it's definitely on the kitten's I mean, a terms. Dog, you can take a dog for a walk. Yes. And you know, you, how many people have you seen that take their cat for a walk? One. I actually just met okay. a lady who does that, but it's All very right, rare. It I is mean, very it's rare. rare. See, a dog yeah. you can take anywhere. I, I, I totally totally agree um but cats I mean, do certainly have a lot a to seeing give. eye dog have you ever seen a seeing eye cat <laughs> i haven't actually i was just reading about a program where the caa tried to um actually introduce a program of cat spies during the right. 50s and they invested a, i think a million and a half or two million into the program and right. the first cat was actually hit by a taxi ah yeah so the program didn't good. work out, but yeah, they had well, a chance to be. You've heard of a guard in. dog. <laughs> yeah. you haven't heard of a guard cat. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> so, so I mean, it is so much different, and I guess that's why people you know, want the dogs more than cats. Yeah, and you know, the other thing is cats actually usually have a longer lifespan as well. So if mm -hmm. cats can live up to, you know, 15 to 20 years old, yeah. um, a big dog usually lives, you know, anywhere from 10 to 14 years. 14, yeah. Um, My dog was 14 when he died. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a long time. a long time. And, you know, little dogs can live a little bit longer, but their lifespans aren't as long either. So, um, you know, that's another reason. When you get a cat, that might be the next 20 years of your life that you have it. All right. Now I don't, I don't, I didn't bring you in here to put you on the spot too much, but I, I got to, I, you know, I'm, I'm still having a hard time grasping. Okay, if you spay and neuter, you're going to get rid of this, this homeless problem. You're going to get rid of the no, uh, the kill problem. I'm not sure that's going to take care of the entire problem here in the Central Valley. This is a big area. It is. We have a lot of people, and we have a lot of stray animals. Yes. So you're right. I mean, spay and neuter programs wouldn't get rid of the entire program, but they would help. Um, what else would you have to do? So there are actually programs. I mean, if you want a, if you want a no kill zone all the way across the valley, yeah. it's got to be more than just spay and neutering. It, it that would be the largest impact. Um, the other thing is, you know, for people. But but, but what what proof do you have that that would work? Uh, just other communities. I've looked at case studies. Such as. Um, so L. A. Right now is actually going through a no kill initiative, and they're actually on course to become a no kill city in under a year. And they actually had a higher pet overpopulation crisis than we did, and their numbers are now way, way, way lower than ours. I mean, they are just decreasing by the year. San Francisco did the same thing. They enforced... Um, but to totally get rid of it is almost an impossibility. Well, their kill rate is well over... Basically, what it means to be a no-kill um, city is to not kill for lack of space. So you can, af you can right. actually have the space to keep an animal until it gets adopted. You still may have to put down an animal if it's sick or injured or aggressive. So you would still have those incidents. Are you in favor of putting them down if they are aggressive and they bite someone? You know, that's Especially not really my call, bull. to be honest. Well, um, I'm just asking your personal opinion. I, I don't I don't associate with breeds like that. We have many, many pit bulls and pit bull mixes in our shelter, and they are some of the sweetest well, forget dogs forget about I've the met. breed. In any dog, yeah. would you be in favor of that? I guess it depends on the dog. You know, unfortunately, what I've seen a lot of the time is a big dog will bite somebody, and that dog will have to be put down. And a little dog that does the same, it's not, you know, as aggressive of an attack. But certainly if a dog bites a child, that's that's a big thing. If it hurts the child. Yeah, and... If the if the dog is prone to attacking humans and they and they might do it again, right. I can see where you know that might have to be an incident where um, you have to consider yeah. that Ab absolutely. But uh, you know, dogs are a product of the people. But they who say raise once them. a dog tastes blood, it's you know it's like a vampire. It's got to have it again and again and again and again. I don't think I agree with that. Okay. I've I've met a few dogs who that. have. Uh, I actually had a dog once who, um, when I first got her, was really aggressive. She had a horrible um, upbringing, and she was really aggressive when I got her, and I trained her. You know, I spent solid right. months not letting her interact with other people and training her and, and actually putting in the time and effort, and she became the sweetest, most docile dog once she was properly trained. So I think dogs are largely a byproduct of the people who raise them and their environment. So the answer is you'd be in favor of it. Given, depending on the circumstances. Okay. All right. Talking to Rosie Davenport, Valley Animal Center, 436 Me TV, option 11. We're going to be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. One Adam.
12. When Adam 12. This is Adam 12. It stars Martin Milner as Officer Pete Malloy, Kent McCord as Officer Jim Reed. One Adam 12, Roger. This black and white patrol car has an overhead valve V8 engine. It develops 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. It accelerates from zero to 60 in seven seconds. It has a top speed of 120 miles an hour. The automobile has two shotgun racks, one attached to the bottom portion of the front seat, one in the vehicle trunk. You want me to drive? Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Back here on Connect with me on MeTV Fresno, Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6. We got another video. We're going to talk about the dog park. Okay. We've got the video. Let's put it up. And uh, so when did this place here come into be? So we've had our current facility. We've been open at this location since 2007. Right. Um, right. But the dog we, park was built when? The dog park was open to, no, a month ago, a full month oh, ago no. now. But it had been under construction for a year. Um, so it took us a while to open the doors, but we're finally able to do so a month ago, which is really exciting. It's been a great addition to the to the dog community here. <laughs> I see that sign says small dog play area. Yes. So you have a small dog play area and a large dog play area? Yes. So small okay. dogs are welcomed in the large dog play area. <laughs> However, no large dogs can go in the small dog play area. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had some people who did request that zone. Um, they were a little afraid of their small dogs playing, so interacting with the bigger dogs. In the shelter, do you keep them apart? as well the yeah. big dogs small dogs yes we have basically um we have about i think we have hmm, what is it now 65 kennels and yeah. the big dogs are all in kennels by themselves and then the small dogs we group together um in in a in a run and so how others. big are the cages generally speaking probably they're the siding goes out up about it's about seven feet high um, they're indoor and outdoor runs, so they they have a door that a trap door that opens and they can go in and out. Um, each run is probably I don't know uh, five feet by ten feet. But inside the shelter now, when they're inside the shelter, they're uh, they're in a cage, right? No, that's oh, the same not. size. It's the same size in it's and the out. Same size yeah. in and out. Okay, yes. and so so that's how big again? Eight, probably eight feet by five feet. Okay, or okay. ten feet by five feet. All right. So, um, uh, what purpose did you see in building the dog park? You know, it was originally we had an acre and a, acre and a half of land left. We were um, granted a, a donation from one of our private donors um, to build a dog park for our own shelter dogs. And we realized after undertaking the project that we had enough space. We didn't need all the space for our own dogs. Um, we thought the community was lacking in a public dog park that um, required all of its members to be spayed and neutered and vaccinated. Um, so you, and. It, the really cool thing about it is that it has a doggy wading pool. Oh. So it's the only doggy swimming pool <laughs> open to the public that we know of in the area. That's pretty good. We got a couple of minutes left. And I want to ask you uh, the question that I posed, I guess, in a monologue. And that is, um, okay, let's say a family adopts a dog. And they suddenly realize it's too much of a burden, not only financially, but, but otherwise. They yeah. can't care for it. They can't spend time with the dog either to walk it or, or pet it or whatever they or play with it. What do they do? Well, it depends. Um, with our organization, if they had adopted the animal from us, they have a re we have a return policy of 30 days. So if they realize in 30 days that they can't take care of the animal anymore, they can bring it back to us. What happens beyond that? Beyond that, you know, it's really a discussion to be had among this amongst the situation. You know, I hope that anybody who decides to take an animal into their home understands that this animal can live for, you know, 10 or 15 years and they know what kind of undertaking they're taking on. However, I understand there are certain situa situations, you know, somebody gets sick, you have to move. There are certain emergencies that happen. Um, you lose a job. Yeah. Yeah. You lose a house. Well, you can't take care of a dog. Or if you suddenly just realize that you don't have time for that dog. Yeah. You can maybe turn it into the SPCA if it's beyond 30 days. I'm sure they'll take you it. You can, yeah. They will take in any animal yeah. control will take in any right. surrendered animal. But you won't take it beyond the 30-day period. Depending on the circumstance. We have had a few circumstances where, you know, somebody loved their animal and, right. you know, they were devastated. Um, and, you know, we have taken them back in. What we've done from time, we call those owner surrenders. And if we have the space, we can sometimes open our shelter to owner surrendered animals. But it's very case, um, case by case. How many of those cases do you have? Um, it's hard to average that. Again, it just depends on how many adoptions we have in any given month. If we have, you know, 20 adoptions, we might have space for two or three owner surrenders there. Does it, in other words, does it happen often? Yeah, I would say we have a few a month. A few a month that, yes. that return the animals. Oh, not that return their animals. No, um, yeah. I would say that the people who 
who actually undertake to un adopt an animal from us, probably 95% per of them keep their animals. I We have very rare cases of people who return animals to us. And if your dog or cat passes away, what do you do? Bury it in the backyard? That's not a service we provide. You know, I think, uh, I don't know the legality of this. I believe there's some law about burying an animal. So um, you probably don't want to shout out to your city official if you're burying an animal on, <laughs> okay. on any land. But I know I'll there are... box and bury it. <laughs> I know there are services yeah. um, that, that cremate your animal. There are pet pet cemeteries again that you could can be go costly to. though too it can um, yeah. and i don't know the cost associated with that but you are very kind to come on our program thanks for having thank me thank you for taking the time and come back again okay you're a very pleasant guest thank you very much for the information and i love your center thank very you. nice if i need a dog or a cat i'm gonna call rosie we're gonna be back tomorrow with another edition of connect with me we're gonna be talking about the major league baseball playoffs with our buddy nick papagni so be here again on Comcast Channel 187, 43.6. That's going to do it for us. See you tomorrow.